Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white tokens deck featuring three copies of King Darien the 48th, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, a 3-mana 2-3 legendary human soldier, giving other creatures we control plus 1 plus 1, so a nice anthem effect, and for 5-mana we can put a plus 1 counter on it and create a 1-1 white soldier creature token, can even sacrifice King Darien at any point, and then a creature tokens we control gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Now sadly, this does not save our tokens from something like a Meat Hook Massacre, which can ignore Indestructible, so that's one of the downfalls of this tokens deck, which is why I'm not going to play it in Ranked today. And then uh, browsing through the rest of our deck, we also have four copies of a Resolute Reinforcements, two mana, one one human soldier with flash, that makes a one one white soldier creature token when it enters. And that's a great way to enable our Gala Greeters, which has Alliance when a creature enters under our control. We can choose one mode that hasn't been chosen between a plus one counter, a tapped treasure token, or two life. So if we make tokens at instant speed during the opponent's turn, we can potentially enable Greeters in our turn and the opponent's turn once again. Then we also have Join the Dance to make two human tokens, can also be flashback for five mana, and all these humans also synergize with Catilda, which can turn our humans into mana creatures, and eventually at six mana we can tap Catilda to put a plus one counter on each creature we control. And then another Anthem effect comes from Entrampet Adversary, can play it early as a 3-1 lifelinker potentially, but in the late game we can pay one and a white any number of times, and then get that many Valor counters, and then our creatures get plus one plus one for each Valor counter on the adversary, can be a great way to close out the game after making tons of tokens. Then of course at three mana full set of wedding announcements, awesome way to make tokens, and potentially draw cards, eventually turning into the wedding festivity to pump the team. And then uh, three copies of Adlin, which is great, especially following a turn two Gala Greeters, as we can uh, trigger the Gala Greeters twice, once from Adlin entering the battlefield, and once again from the attacking human token. And then we also have one copy of the Queen, which scales with the number of creatures we control, and if one or more creature tokens would be created under our control, we get to make an additional 1-1 soldier token as well. So this is great alongside cards like Adlin and Announcement that we can play on a previous turn, so we can get immediate value of our Queen and also have a very large creature in play. And then at 4 mana we have two copies of Wandering Emperor as removal, mainly for the minus 2, but can also make Samurai tokens which synergize with the rest of our deck. And then we've got Sarah Paragon, letting us replay some of our spells out of our graveyard, including cards like Wedding Announcement, can even replay our adversary in the late game once we have more mana to potentially sink into the ability, and the reinforcements, despite being a token maker of sorts, still counts as a permanent we can replay with Paragon. Also a bit of synergy here in our mana base with the Botanical Plaza, which can be sacrificed to draw a card, can then be replayed with Paragon, and then if we sacrifice it a second time we'll also gain two life and be exiled. And then at 5 mana we've got some spicy ones with Rabble Rousing, has Hideaway 5 when it enters, and then whenever we attack with one or more creatures we get to make that many 1-1 one, one green and white citizen creature tokens, and then if we control 10 or more creatures we get to play the Exalt card for free, which can also be very powerful. And then Defiler of Faith is our final new addition from Dominaria, a 5-5 with Vigilance, and lets us use Phyrexian mana basically to cast our white permanent spells, and whenever we cast a white permanent spell we get to make a 1-1 white soldier creature token, so another larger creature to help diversify our threats in case we're facing some sweeper effects, and then can easily make an army of soldier tokens all by itself. And then our mana base, as we mentioned, two botanical plazas to draw cards if we're flooding out a bit, farmland, and then seven forest, eleven plains, no pain land in green-white just yet, and then we also have the channel lands for additional interaction. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, yeah, this hand has potential, greeters if it survives with a couple tokens can trigger multiple times. And then the Paragon can get it back. Do have a bit of a hole in our curve here, no 3-drop. Opponent black-white with a Pilgrim. Ooh, nice Adlin. Could potentially trigger Gala Greeters twice next turn. Maybe make a treasure and put a plus one counter on it so it can attack past their 2-2. Two -two. 
opponent maybe on an Esper Legends deck. It's gonna cut down our Greeter, sadly. Still gonna play Adlin here, since we can also get it back with Paragon. Another Greeters. We'll have to wait a turn. Could see more removal end of turn. It's gonna be Shieldred. That one's a problem. Don't have much removal for it. At least we can double spell and the Greeters can gain life. So we'll get the full value on Gala Greeters and then Adlin can attack past Shieldred. Opponent blocks a token. And then we wouldn't mind drawing a land so Paragon gets back Gala Greeters. Adlin down. And Rafine, which can help them connive. Well, we'll be trumping Shieldred for the foreseeable future. No line, sadly. So where does that leave me? Probably still play Paragon, make another treasure. Pass it back. Elisa's a good one too. So our opponent hasn't missed a beat. Playing an Esper Legends deck. Rafine attacks. Keeping Shieldred back on defense now. Okay. Rabble Rousing could be a nice way to go over the top. For now... Can go with a Gala Greeters as opposed to Adlin. Since we want to try and gain as much life as possible here to survive. And go for another Join the Dance to maybe set up our Rabble Rousing next turn. Jadar is fine. Okay. So our opponent's on empty, but they are presenting quite a bit of damage with our flyers and shieldred. Also gaining life with connive, making it difficult to race. So we can still block here at least. If we can play a large enough adversary, we can discourage attacks. Although, do we maybe go for a rabble rousing here? I would lose quite a few creatures in the attack, but uh, maybe worth it? Sure. Could also go for a large adversary instead. Can pump it three times. Yeah, that would make it difficult for the opponent to get through. So maybe that's the play. And then the question is what to do with Gala Greeters. Maybe gain two and one treasure so we can still play a Rabble Rousing next turn. Okay. Pass it back. Thalia's fine. We'll make it so Rabble Rousing is now 6 mana, so we need a land for it. And Lisa attacking is 
somewhat surprising since they may not draw enough non-land cards to grow Lisa here. I guess her opponent's diversifying. So we can take out Lisa, can block the zombie with our life linker, so we gain more life for free. Okay, so that worked out. No untapped lands, which means we'll probably just replay Adlin here, make more treasure. Maybe gain two as well. And any attacks? Don't think so. We'll wait for a rebel rousing. So Rafine can still attack if they want. Shieldred gets busy too. And our opponent keeps conniving. So we can block the zombie token with adversary and Shieldred could attempt to double block. Or we can just trade for Adlin. Which uh, probably still works if they kill Adversary at instant speed here somehow. Um, nah, that seems fine. Could have also blocked Rafine, although if they had removal for Adversary, we could have lost our Angel. And our opponent's got a backup shield, it makes sense. Okay, I think it's time for Rabble Rousing. And, uh, sure we'll play Boseju. Finding Defiler or King. Let's go with the King so we can pump our team right away. And do we just send with everyone? We should have decent attacks. Maybe the adversary stays back so it doesn't trade for the Death Toucher. Could also see an argument for keeping the flyer back. Opponent is at 59, so we're not killing them here with this attack. So I'll keep my Paragon back on defense. Still gonna make four tokens, which is enough to trigger Hideaway. Alright, so we get a bunch more triggers. Gala greeters maxing out. Alright. Rafine attacks. I'm surprised they played out to lands, which they could have discarded with Knife. I get to untap, and then what's next for us? We can play Adlin or activate our king, and then keep attacking and making more tokens with Rabble Rousing. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and is promising. If Gala Greeter survives, especially with a uh, join the dance to trigger it twice, and then if they kill it, we can still eventually get it back with Paragon. Paragon also nice with Adversary, so maybe we actually play Adversary turn two if we expect it to die. Turn one mountain. Now, Wedding Announcement will be our next play. Yeah, you know what, so we'll try this uh, Adversary play. And then turn 3 Announcement, and then Gala Greeters. Maybe triggers the same turn we play it off Announcement. Maybe we'll be able to double spell Join the Dance plus Gala Greeters. Opponent Monored so far. And they're gonna pass a turn. Okay, we'll hit for 3, see what happens. Probably gonna see a removal spell, but that plays right into our Paragon game plan. 
and then later we can get adversary back while maybe paying extra to pump the team. So now our opponent's likely tapping out for a threat. And then we can double spell greeters, join the dance, get all three triggers once we get our announcement token. And then we'll have more mana to leverage Sarah Paragon. Stormseeker hits us for three, I'm sure. Defiler of Faith could be fun too. Okay, so next turn we could play the Filer. Thundering Raichu is pretty scary too. I'm okay uh, throwing my tokens in front, although next turn they would get plus one plus one, so maybe it's worth it to wait a turn. And then our Defiler would also be a 6 6, which they won't have an easy time getting past. But for now they can attack. So we're at 11, and uh, yeah, the filer seems fine. And we'll go with probably treasure and plus one counter here. Would grow this up to a 4-4, four, four. so it dodges lightning strike. And then we can gain more life in the future to offset the filer's ability. Can maybe play Paragon and Adversary using Phyrexian mana. So that's gonna cost a bit. So we're already reaching the point in the game where our opponent needs either flying creatures or burn spells to close out the game. But once we get our Paragon and Adversary going, we're gonna be able to turn the corner very quickly. Adversary with Kicker gets back Lightning Strike. Can go upstairs. Or they can target Defiler to discourage a block, but yeah, going face makes more sense. So they can deal two more damage with the Ranger's ability if they want. And they are actually attacking. Well, they're not gonna have many creatures left once we're done here. And then the Gala Greeters can gain more life to make sure we don't die to double Lightning Strike to the face. So I'll be careful not to use too much life to cast my spells. Okay, so Raiju is probably the thing we actually want to kill. So it doesn't deal more damage next turn, but we can just double block with our tokens. This seems fine. And we're also close to just killing the opponent on the way back. In fact, I could have just taken the 4 from Raiju, and we would have had lethal. Although, let's see here. Can I play Paragon for 3 mana? Yeah, we're a little bit short, I think. Let's see. Well, actually, we could pump the team with Adversary. If we pay for life, then team gets plus 1 plus 1. Is that enough for lethal? Gala Greeters can get another counter. So that's 10, 11, plus 6, plus 5. Yeah, that should be enough. And we can gain 2 as well here. So once again, Phyrexia Mana. And then we can pump the team. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a promising hand. Could play Catilda on two. Or we can uh, go with the reinforcements first. 
Might want to hang on to reinforcements until after we play our queen. Although if we play reinforcements first, it can tap for mana the turn we play Catilda. Although only the creature half, the token's not an actual human. So, close call. Opponent might have some removal here, which is another reason to flash in reinforcements instead. Fable on three. Always good. And Wandering Emperor. So I think we just play a queen. Since we can't quite double spell. And then next turn Emperor could maybe make two tokens thanks to the queen. It's going to be risky to block the Shaman if they can kill one of my tokens. But we'll see if they even attack. They do. Alright, do we block? Or do they have removal anyway? Fires of Victory with Kicker. That's a good one. Don't think I want to block because we want to enable Rabble Rousing. Can just exile the token with Wandering Emperor. If I play Catilda, we have three mana. Not quite enough. And we'll see if we want a Rabble Rousing next turn already, or if we wait for more tokens. Another Fable. And a Bolt to finish off Emperor. Until next time, then. So yeah, Rabble Rousing does not look great here, now that there's a bunch of tutus. So... Can play Catilda. Opponent might be hanging on to a Fading Hope. Could play a Kicked Adversary. Or we can flash in another Reinforcements. We'll go with the Reinforcements here. Just to consider instead. Opponent might play around another Wandering Emperor, since we are representing it here. This card's Fading Hope, so they had one after all. Reflection copies Shaman. And we'll take four. Deluge is fine. Okay, so we might actually be able to enable Rabble Rousing, which would be great. And right, they've got another Fires for Catilda. So not quite enough to enable Rabble Rousing all the way. Although I think it's still worth it just to make four additional tokens. And another Rabble Rousing, I guess. Just keep going wide here. Now with two copies of Reflection, they can copy kind of each other just to make an army of two twos. Not opposed to double blocking the original Shaman, just to shut down their mana generation. Probably fine to triple block. Opponent can flash back Deluge, so if they have any sweepers in their deck, they can uh, probably find them. Gala Greeters. Is that what we want to play here? Just to get all three modes. I guess we can start there. And then wait on Adversary until next turn to maybe flush out a sweeper first. Mm, 
Okay. And Hideaway finds probably King Darien. Would be pretty great to uh, potentially stop a sweeper. And also has immediate impact if we do manage to cast it off Hideaway. Alright, points at 10. Didn't think I need to commit anything else to the board. And a whole breaker horror. Now that's scary. They can copy whole breaker with reflection and bounce a ton of stuff. That'll do it. Well, at least we got rid of the reflections here, but our opponent's gonna get rid of our life total as well. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and this hand has potential. Turn two. Might want to uh, go for Gala Greeters, hoping it survives. Yeah, that seems fine. If we play Catilda first, or Reinforcements, then we could maybe double spell on the following turn with Catilda and our Human tapping for mana. Although we do miss out on a couple Gala Greeters triggers. Get to untap. And uh, yeah, I think we flash in reinforcements. Can maybe ambush the Apicure as well by growing Gala Greeters at instant speed. Opponent sacrifices a blood token here. And a Stormseeker to play. So we could try to. Double block the Stormseeker, but now we're just gonna block the Epicure. Swan Counter and Treasure seem the most valuable. Okay. So I could play Wandering Emperor, Exile Stormseeker, which would not be bad. Or we can play Queen, and if we play Catilda first, that still works, thanks to our human tapping for mana. Yeah, that's also quite efficient. So we'll uh, go for plus one counter, and then we can play our Queen, need to use our treasure as well. Go for treasure. And we can hit for three, or keep the greeters back. And then Wandering Emperor making a token will make two, thanks to our Queen. And our opponent's going all in on the flyer since they can't get past my 5-5. Five five. Could also exile the Phoenix Chick. So, if I join the dance I can still play Wandering Emperor. Get to max out on the Gala Greeters. And uh, probably send in the Queen now. If her opponent takes it, do I just flash an Emperor, make a token? Yeah, it seems fine. And then next turn the King pumping the team might be enough for lethal. If we had played Emperor in the opponent's turn, we would have gotten more value of Gala Greeters. This way we got in a bit more damage. So that was a close call. So our opponent needs something pretty special here. Sheevan Devastator, another flyer. Yeah, that's kind of scary, but uh, we should still survive. 
They can take out Emperor, hit us for four. They're just going face. We're just gonna do the same here. Make a token. Keep watch for intruders. And play Adlin as well. Probably wanted to use the treasure instead of my humans, but that's okay. Should still have lethal. 17 powered queen. Opponent's got two blockers. And we have five at least going through. All right, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn two reinforcements, turn three... Maybe go for a wedding announcement so we can play the queen afterwards and get immediate value by making two tokens. Opponent black-white. And Jada, so angels. Could be scary. We'll stick to the plan. Wedding announcement, no attacks, make a token. It's your opponent, Mardu, angels. Okay, player queen. And the plaza. And make two tokens now. And then next turn, adversary can pump the team. So now even if they kill the queen, at least we got a token out of the deal. Alright. Is it still the plan to adversary? I guess the fact that they're holding up removal. They could have a wandering emperor to exile it once we attack with the queen. So in that case, adversary pumping the token is still good enough. Although we are about to transform announcement here to pump the team, so maybe we can wait so we don't have to run adversary into removal, which could set up some bad attacks. So in that case, probably go for another wedding announcement. Can move to combat first, but don't think I'm attacking. So those trigger, make more tokens. Yeah, that's quite impressive now. If our opponent doesn't have a board wipe, there's going to be a lot of damage coming in. 2-2 two -two death touch is kind of annoying. So we may not be attacking with our queen. Although I Ganjo is a way to get rid of it. Although, that probably means no adversary then. I guess that's fine. We'll just join the dance, make some more tokens, and then attack with all. Opponent lines up some blocks. Falls to six. And yeah, if we can dodge a sweeper here, adversary is certainly going to be enough. But yeah, there we go. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Hand has a lot of potential. Gala greeters into Adlin is one of our better starts, as we can trigger the greeters twice on turn three already. Opponent on a red deck. Well, let's see if they don't have removal here. Play with fire, Galak Reaper's down. That's too bad. Although it makes it less likely they can take out Adlin. Our hand's a little awkward. Could use another spell we can cast next turn. If they use two burn spells to take care of Adlin, that's also fine by me. 
we at least we can block the token. And join the dance, not bad. So that'll pump Adlin, which does have Vigilance, so kind of a better squee in this spot. And Rabble Rousing is going to be excellent as well. Lightning Strike, plus another Play With Fire, perhaps. Just double Lightning Strike. Fair enough. So now we probably go for another Adlin. No blocks to preserve our tokens for Rabble Rousing. And then maybe just attack with one token to get the benefit from Adlin. And then next turn we could uh, make enough creatures to cast a card for free. Does our opponent attack? Nope, just equips the flyer here to get in some evasive damage. So it could use some life gain. Oh, Intrepid Adversary. 3-1 lifelink I guess is good enough. Over Defiler. And we're just gonna smash. Could have also declined to play the Adversary and then next turn with more mana open been able to pump the team, but we have a King to pump the team next turn. Which should be enough to close out the game, assuming we don't get burnt out. Two more Lightning Strikes will do it. Although there's only two more left in the deck. Sheevan Devastator gets pretty close, but not quite. And yeah, our opponent knows that they're dead on the way back. But we can play King Darion just because. And make 11 tokens here. 25 powered Adelin gets chumped by Squee. And the rest can cross the finish line. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. We'll have to wait and see which 2-drop to start out with here. Going into multicolor deck. So Gala Greeters is tempting. Yeah, it's probably worth it. If it dies, we still get it back with Paragon. Career's briefcase, so... Potentially a five-color Kami War deck. So they might also have Meat Hook Massacre. Ooh, Adlin. Great draw. Make a treasure. Attack. Get a plus one counter. And we're off to the races. So probably going to go for a Join the Dance plus Reinforcements, which can trigger Gala Greeters in the opponent's turn once again. Binding takes care of Adlin. Okay. Another Gala Greeters. So Meat Hook Massacre is definitely on my mind here. So... I think we just join the dance with a plan of reinforcements in the opponent's turn. If they massacre for uh, three, then we can still potentially save the greeters if we want to. Since we'll go for a treasure and plus one counter here. Opponent chumps. So it does feel like a massacre might be incoming. 
And then we have to decide if we value the two tokens more than the greeters. Probably value the greeters more. All right, never mind. Kami War is going to exile the greeters. Can get some value from it first. Treasure and two life. Ooh, and a rabble rousing. Let's go. Now I guess I can greeters first and fully trigger that as well. And hope for something exciting. Hopefully something that doesn't die to a uh, Meat Hook Massacre. Wedding announcement works. Attack, transform, trigger greeters a bunch, and draw a card end of turn. And then if they don't massacre, adversary can maybe win the game next turn. Bouncing announcements, we'll discard, join the dance. Even though we can get stuff back with Paragon, it's a close call. I think I still discard, join. So they actually don't have double black at the moment, although migration could find a swamp. So they can massacre for two. No, gets a mountain instead. So maybe our tokens are safe after all. Another herd migration up to 17. Although, can we kill them here with a doubly kicked adversary? Well, there's only one way to find out. Our opponent explodes. Awesome. All right, so we get to see our green-white tokens deck in action. And yeah, overall, not the most competitive deck out there, so I wouldn't recommend it for ranked ladder, but pretty fun if you're just looking to make some tokens and see some cool cards in action. Was pretty happy with Rabble Rousing, didn't see too much of Defiler necessarily making tokens, but it is a larger creature that gives you an alternate angle of attack, so it can be helpful against some of the smaller sweeper effects like Massacre. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.